Good. When I mentioned, you know, like everything was all these vents. This was all all moved by hand. Everything was, you know, manual. And if you uh, if you went back home and you and you Googled. Uh, the process of malting, you'll see the process is exactly the same, except you'll see like a lot of lights and computer research. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's nothing manual about any of that. Again, this is all cinder block, so this is all modern stuff. Modern as far as 1980s, early 1980s, all of this type of equipment. And this is when Genesee took it over. Francis Perot um, Incorporated, uh, they closed their corporation in 1962. And um, then it was uh, operated actually by two other companies. They were Canadian companies. And also Schaefer, Schaefer Beer ran it for a while. And then in 1984, nobody had it much, nobody had it very long um, after the Francis Pro organization uh, closed up. And then in 1984, uh, it was taken over by Genesee. And uh, Genesee also had a subsidiary. The subsidiary was Cook. Cook Brewing, if you ever remember the name, yep. Cook Beer. Mm -hmm. yep. So Cook Beer was actually a uh, subsidiary of Genesee. So Genesee, when they were running it, they made the, uh, the malt for uh, Cook, and Cook Beer was uh, brewed actually in Dunkirk, New York, right. and Genesee was brewed in Rochester. But they did the malting here from 1984 to 1992. Interesting. <laughs> section in here, we're going to talk about um, pre-1922, okay, uh, before the deal was made between the two companies, uh, Francis Perot can only bring his uh, barley in by rail car, so he'd bring it into here, and the first cars, when they first started out doing this, they used box cars, okay, so if they used box cars, what they did is they used this great system, so there was a wall on it, you know, it was encapsulated with a wall. And they take and they call them scoopers, the same as they call the scoop, the same guys that unloaded the ships. But they would shovel the uh, shovel the barley out into this uh, into this grate, and then it would be carried with a belt, the conveyor belt, and lifted, elevated up to the top where it met this conveyor system, and then it sent it over to the malt house. This is pre-1922. And then once it was uh, once the malt was made, then they'd send it back again and then they'd weigh it and distribute it, and I'll show you where that goes in a moment. Later on, like the new cars, the modern cars now, they all have a little funnel or a hopper on the bottom of them. You may have seen the rail cars with little funnels on the bottom. So then when they pulled them in, this door here would be the same thing, that the rail car, the chute would open on the bottom, and they'd still use the same belt that would take it over to this point. So now over here, And we've got, you know, the rollers and everything are still intact here. So this would be a, uh, this would be a belt system that came across. And then it would lift it up. There was two sections. This one would lift it up to the top. And then it would take it over again, over to the malt house. Or it would bring it back. And if it brought it back, it would bring it back to the second story. And we'll show you where that goes. There's a, these other two chutes on the side. You see them, they're on an angle. One was malt and one was barley. This was, uh, these were put in after we had the silos in here. So this was after the storage was available. Okay. So as we go into this room, 